All right, guys, do you want to know about different industrial systems that are out there? We're talking resonance systems. Then hang on for just two seconds, and I'm going to let you know. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your host, Alessio the Truth. I'm not the truth. Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by Him, reminding you to be selfless and not selfish. On today, the Lord's Day, Sunday, you're going to get your ass to church now. Come on. You don't even have to go to church, really. You just need to know. You need to repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins. All right. I got Amelia in the back. And we're going to talk about different industrial resonance systems. And specifically, these are like uh, universal systems that, that are out there. Uh, but we do sell these specific systems at New Jersey Decorative Concrete Supply. And we're gonna go over the different kinds, what kind of traffic they're made, uh, uh, they're made for, and how they're compiled, and and why Daddy, they're made the way they're made. Okay. All right. So let's start with like the common. We call this a high build system, high build epoxy system. This is gonna be when you want to kind of like fill in. The unevenness in the floor right so if you're looking to do you know a lot of guys a lot of times when I go to see these big warehouses they'll just have some painters that come in and dip and roll 100% solid epoxy at like 200 square feet a gallon and that's just because that's what they know how to do right so they're painting it it's still a very thick coating compared to normal paint because it's 100% solids um, but you still see all the roughness and unevenness inside the concrete, right? So when the customer's looking for something a little bit more heavy duty and you want to give them that glassed out look, you go with the high build system. We sell this system from Gorilla Coatings, as you know, industrial coating systems. And the way it works is we have a low viscosity primer that you're going to put on using a V-notch squeegee at around 230 to 260 square feet a gallon. This specific coating is designed to be like a medium build. It's going to be like a 93% solids, but very low viscosity designed to penetrate to the concrete, really wet out very nicely. It's designed for that, right? And um, it's going to prevent most of the pinholes in your floor. And it's going to add to the overall thickness of your high build epoxy system okay so you put your primer down at 234 square feet it's essential guys when you're doing this forget about magic trials like you're gonna to have to get v-notch squeegees and those squeegees are gonna wear out on you about every 800 square feet especially on the first coat when you're going directly over concrete so on a 10,000 square foot job, you're going to have 10 squeegees for that first coat. For the second coat, I'd probably buy 10 just in case so that you have a consistent thickness. But when you're pulling a V-notch, and I mean pull and not push, um, the way it's designed to be used, you can end up having the right thickness through and through. Okay? Then you'll be coming in the next day. These are industrial systems. You want to get back in within a recode window, especially when you're doing 10,000, 12,000 square feet. You're not looking to sand 10 to 12,000 square feet because that's just going to take you forever. So generally speaking and depending on temperature, you're going to have around 24 hours. So on these big jobs, it's very easy to do 10, 20, 30,000 square feet. We can knock that out with like four guys, you know, a mixing station. One guy that the mixing station pours it the ribbons, you can do it in like a hippo, and then you get a guy with the V-notch and one guy just back rolling following you. So you can cover a lot of square footage. Uh, you're gonna put the high build epoxy, which is a pigmented 100 percent solid epoxy. All the gorilla products come with a tint base, so you get very good color hide. Okay, it doesn't matter which color. It's not like a clear with a pigment like a lot of these other companies do. These are pigmented from the factory. So is the base coat. So is the high build coat. That coat is going to go 
for a modest system, 80 to 100 square feet a gallon. That's 12 to 15 mils, and you're gonna use a V-notch squeegee for that as well. So you now filled in the floor nicely with the primer, and you're filled in with the 100% uh, solids, the high build epoxy, Gorilla high build epoxy. And now you're basically gonna have around 15 to uh, probably like 17 mils, something like that, 15, 17, 18 mils. The final coat, which is gonna be your, your ultimate wear coat, and this is where the systems can vary depending on the traffic and, and how you wanna go about it. We always recommend two urethane top coats. Two urethane top coats, and we have a few options. But usually for the high build systems in warehouse environments, we want you to use Gorilla High Performance Polyurethane. It's solvent based and we do have them in VOC compliance for whatever state you're in. To where it's going to be like under 300, like usually 200 and change. And the pigmented is going to be about 60 to 65% solids. Those are going to go down. Now, I, I personally like to squeegee those out because on a big area, dipping and rolling takes a long time. But this is a lower viscosity thing. You want to put that down around 260 to 280 square feet per gallon and do two coats. Remember, if it's 60% solids, 40% of it is going to evaporate, all right? The high build epoxy system with two coats, those are going to be really good when installing them, for example, airplane hangers do really, really well with this system. Very chemical resistant. And we do have different options, right? If you wanted to finish it overall with 100% solid epoxy, I would recommend just doing a thicker coat, one lift. Instead of uh, 80 to 100, lay it down at like 50, 40 to 50 square feet a gallon. And you're gonna have a really thick, wear coat that's going to take years and years you can always come back and easily screen it and apply another coat of epoxy now that same system we have another one which would be for like chemical labs and anything that's going to have high exposure like containment systems places that deal with like gasoline different chemicals where if they have a spill they have like kind of like a tank <coughs> chemical labs We'll sometimes use them in kitchens, and that's the Gorilla Novolac system, uh, also known as the chemical resistant system. Same thing, except for instead of normal epoxy, the low viscosity primer is going to be a Novolac epoxy. Novolac is a kind of a compound. Let me try to put a downshift so it's just not as droney because I get the exhaust and the armada, baby. Hey, baby, sit down. Because you got to be safe. Sit down. Come on. Um, the Novolag system, the the primer, is going to be chemical resistant through and through. All right. Uh, so you're putting that down. That same thing. 230, 268 square feet. These are numbers that you're going to get using V-notch squeegees. That's going to be very low viscosity to prevent pinholes, and then you're going to install the Novolac, Gorilla Novolac epoxy at 80 to 100 square feet a gallon. After that, you're coming in the next day and following up with the two coats of uh, different urethanes. Now, that's going to depend on the type of chemicals that are in that environment, but for chemical resistance, uh, we generally want you to stay with the Novolac, right? So, we also have a Novolac top coat that's dipped and rolled and we always like two two layers of top coats because when you're done you're gonna be left with about three mils with one coat two to three mils you want to have at least four to six mils of wear layers so it takes a lot longer for that to wear through people are gonna be spending thousands and thousands of dollars on these systems they don't want to have to close the, the, the labs down and stop making money right something that takes a lot of time and so when you're creating these systems you want to do it right so that's the Novolac system 
I'm going to go through some of the more exotic systems just to put it out there because uh, there's going to come these situations where you're going to need something like this. We have electrostatic dissipating systems with Gorilla Epoxy systems. And so you treat these the same way that you would treat a high build system. The only difference, the products are going to be electrostatic dissipating. They're going to cost a lot more because there's going to be conductive materials inside of them. Um, and we have two kinds. We have the high build system. And essentially the way they work is you're going to take and we give you, when you buy the Gorilla Electro, we'll call it ESD systems, we're going to send you a sheet with the material that, that you're buying that's been tested, right? We test it to ground to see how it dissipates electricity. So you will get a piece of, uh, it's actually almost like on a paper that has the product on it, that has the test results written, written on it for that batch. And the only difference is you're going to install this, this self-adhesive tape that's copper. So we give you copper tape that you lay on the, on the ground. You have it running through. It should be um, every thousand square feet you want to have a line in there, right? A thousand square feet straight and to the left. And then those end up getting grounded to a terminal. So you have them kind of sticking out of the sides. Um, some places will have columns. But basically, they end up going up into an outlet where they have a ground. In some cases, you'll be required to put grounding rods into the floor. Where you'll be drilling a hole and inserting a grounding rod that's going to get its, you know, its earth, its neutrality from, not neutrality, its ground, from, from the earth. Okay? So, those are applied in the same way. We offer them in two styles. High build. High build epoxy. And then we have a thin mill system as well. Thin mill system, the primer goes down, again, 230, 260 square feet a gallon, and then you're gonna use the, the urethane top coat, um, which is also electrostatic dissipating through and through. And what that is for is like different labs. We did a place that used to do like spray bottles. They can't have electricity. Any rooms where they have uh, chemicals that can explode, this can be across many industries. You're always going to see like grounding terminals where they have a 55 gallon drum and they'll plug this in and that's all grounded. That's so that when you touch it, there's no spark and you, pre you prevent explosions. The other system, since I mentioned the ESD thin mill system, is thin mill epoxy systems. Okay, and you can do those in a several, several applications. I love Gorilla Grind and Seal. Right? You're going to put dip and roll, a, a clear, thin coat of uh, our prime time epoxy. It dries in about one to two hours. You come right back over it with the polyurethane at 500 square feet. You can do that solid color or clear. Ends up coming out to about uh, 30, 30, 60, like 72, 77 cents a square foot. And then basically... Clear, pigmented, but then you can substitute, right? You can do like medium builds, uh, systems where you have maybe a low viscosity primer underneath and then just top coat it with the urethane, okay? A lot of these systems work out in a lot of places. I think people just really don't have expectations of what they're getting. Um, but when you're taking 100% solid epoxy and putting it at 200, I'm sorry, our primer is not 100%, but it's high build. It's like 92, 93. You're going to get a decent uh, film thickness, you know what I mean? And so you'll be able to install that. And, um, you know, you'll be able to uh, install a system that's got some kind of a build. For different applications and epoxy guys I know everyone's like a scratchers usually but you know yes you take a key and it's gonna scratch but when you're driving forklifts and things like that it's how it wears out and guys epoxy wears perfectly fine we like the polyurethane a lot of the times so that we can put aluminum oxide in which makes it really scratch resistant but usually it's for the chemical resistance, you know what I mean? And it does have really good abrasion resistance as well, better than an epoxy. 
Um, we sell with Gorilla uh, Gorilla Coatings products. We sell. We have epoxies, guys. We have epoxies that are as scratch resistant as polyurethanes. We have one thing from Gorilla called high performance epoxy, which is going to have scratch resistance, chemical resistance that rivals and competes with aliphatic polyurethanes. Then we're going to take it into the decorative systems. But before we do decorative, let's just do industrial systems, which can be substituted with decorative. You're going to have your double broadcast system. Guys usually ch cheap out on it. Um, they'll just do 100% solids broadcast, 100% broadcast, and then just one top coat. But a real system designed to last, come on, honey. <laughs> You're going to put our Gorilla Primer, the low viscosity primer down at 230 square feet a gallon. Then you're going to come back and put the high build epoxy, solid color. And you're going to broadcast your quartz, uh, silica sand at uh, 80 to 100 square feet a gallon. Also very Hello. important, Hello. also very important to use a V-notch squeegee. The reason being is when you use a magic trowel, you're putting it on too thin and you really need the, the right thickness so that when you're throwing the broadcast, you're creating a thick layer that's just fully encrusted with sand and quartz. You do that two times. So primer, base coat, second broadcast coat, grout coat, and then you want to go and install the same color, pigmented polyurethane, which is high, high performance polyurethane from Gorilla and we do have different options for that uh, we like that that product specifically great scratch resistance chemical resistance um, high wearing okay very hard compressive strength and then the substitute of that is decorative so now instead of using solid colors you're going to use clear and instead of using regular sand you're going to get some decorative quartz you're going to see this decorative cord stuff used in a lot of uh, a lot of labs. Every time I go into a lab, I see it. Labs, different office spaces, um, hospitals. I've seen it in pharmaceuticals. It's a nice look. You usually accompany it, accompany it with cove base. And uh, really a classic system that a lot of people don't even really know about. If you're just doing residential... You know, we have a guy that does this in garages all the time, and he's, you know, it's more expensive. It's clearly, it's more, you know, coats, but um, it's something totally different. It gives you a really nice texture when you're done. Uh, the top coat, you're pulling it real tight, so you have that slip resistance, but you have just a nice thick cluster of quartz, and then the top wear layer, you're just kind of skating on the tops of the quartz, so... It works out really well. Another system, the flake system. Substitute the sand for flakes. People do do double broadcast uh, flake systems. I'm not a big fan of that. I know people do it. It just, to me, it doesn't make any sense. But the way you want to do something like that, um, a real system, now it depends if you're on wood, you're going to use a flexible epoxy primer from Gorilla Coatings. If you're on concrete, we want you to use the high build, low viscosity primer. And then you're going to come back and follow up with a high build system, a high build epoxy, broadcast your flakes into that. Then we're going to have you do a nice clear coat. I like the polyaspartic. Indoors, epoxy's been used for ages, which that will work well. But then after that, then we want to do a second coat of polyurethane. These are industrial systems. You can put these in residential too. The residential is a little bit more competitive kind of a market where, you know, people are cheap and they might not want to pay. But when I'm, when I'm telling you to put a, a base coat down first, and that could be a flexible, low viscosity, or uh, vapor barrier epoxy depending on the situation and then do a broadcast and then do a grout coat where you top coat it and then do a dip and roll urethane this is for industrial settings this is for high traffic 
We want it to last as long as possible, right? And so you saw us do that system. We did it in Manhattan. We put a flexible epoxy broadcast into that uh, because they wanted to kind of cheap out on it a little bit. But then we did do a urethane, an epoxy top coat, and then we did another urethane top coat on top of that. We want these systems to be heavy duty for your booty. Um, another system, Gorilla Industrial Series, urethane cement slurry. Right, uh, that one, you know, same thing. Expensive, uh, expensive, whatever that means. But it's industrial, and the product is more money. It costs more per square foot because of how thick it goes down. You're gonna lay it down with a half inch V notch, and, and it lays down at about an eighth of an inch. And so each kit is gonna get you, depending on uh, the kits, you know, forty. To 60 square feet. We have two one, two that we saw in New Jersey decorative concrete. A lot of the time, these systems you're able to like just grind, put that down, throw sand into it, and then put a top coat over it. You know, so you get you get to do it faster than you would say like a double broadcast port system. Um, let me see. I can see. Can I see my baby back there? Yeah, I can. You see it? What you doing over there? <laughs> All right, um, <clears throat> the urethane cement is going to be thermal shock resistance. Now, what is this? Thermal shock resistance, something that's able to withstand going from like room temperature to really hot. Um, with epoxy, if you ever remove the epoxy, you could take a heat gun and it melts right off. So you need something with thermal shock resistance, which is able to withstand high changes in... Um, and temperatures, this is really hard with my baby over here touching everything. <laughs> right, baby? She likes to touch everything. <laughs> I didn't drive. You're not going to drive. All right, so that's going to be used in like commercial kitchens, slaughterhouses. These systems can be used in a, in, a, in a wide array of ways. So hold on, honey, please. You can do it in a couple ways. You can do it where you do a neat system. And a lot of times it's not going to work because of the slip resistance and all that kind of stuff. But um, you can just put urethane cement slurry on the floor and leave it. You know, a little bit thicker is always better. It's going to level out nice. You're going to get some pinholes here and there. Um, in some systems, like slaughterhouses, they'll just broadcast like a, a 100 grit, 100 grit um, sand and then leave it. You know, so this is for like industrial stuff where they're gonna hose and you know push. It's not gonna look pretty, but especially when it's dirty, but it's gonna work the right way. Okay. Another way is to use a epoxy primer before you use the urethane cement so that you don't have pinholes and leave that as the final surface. One of the really good things about urethane cement slurry systems by Gorilla Coatings. I made a video a while back where I'm taking like a 45 pound dumbbell plate and throwing it in the air and just slamming it. It's really impact resistant. It's not going to chip like epoxy. Um, it's going to like indent. So when you're looking for like the most, no, 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 please, please don't do that. Don't do that. Play with the other one. Um, When you're doing, uh, don't it. touch that one. Don't make me tell you again. Hey, what did I tell you? Purpose. Stay over there. Sorry, guys. Um, I want to finish this. Wrap this up quick. I got one more after this. So whatever. It's very impact resistant. It's the most heavy duty. You're going to use this in... Like every kitchen needs to have urethane cement slurry. And my next class is going to be urethane cement slurry and terrazzino. Um, traditionally, the way you're going to do a urethane cement is urethane cement slurry direct to concrete, sand to rejection. Come back the next day or if you're using an accelerator, uh, you're able to get back on it that night. Then you're going to put a chemical resistant top coat. You're going to give a, we're going to give you either, I like Novolac. Novolac epoxy for the Gorilla system and then I like to go and, and throw in another top coat 
of polyurethane with Novolac Emilia. Come on. Stop. <laughs> We're going to give you the, the Novolac top coat, which is like more scratch resistant. Um, just so you get a little bit extra build. Nobody wants to do their floor like every five years, every 10 years. Like, okay, 10 years might be okay, but you want that thing to last 15 years, 20 years. You want to be able to come back in, give it a little sand, and then maybe just put like a top coat, another top coat over it, or um, sand it, put another coat of Novolag, maybe throw some quartz into that and top coat it. So, but ideally, I don't ever want to go back. And in a lot of in a lot of cases, I'm doing a kitchen at the end of the month, thirty six thousand dollars. I'm putting everything on there. I'm stacking the deck because I don't want to have to guy. The guy's gonna close down, and you know, you're spending thirty six thousand like on a car or something. You want that thing to last, right? The final one is, uh, and guys, there's so many more systems. I'm just trying to keep it, keep it. You know, I, I got epoxy mortar systems and power trial systems we'll get to that another time my baby's driving me crazy here right now um the terrazino the way the terrazino works it is a decorative system that can take high wearing you know if it's going to be a lot of like traffic high schools and it's like think of stuff like that locker rooms restaurants and basically that's going to go down like a metallic right metallic is another decorative system that I don't really feel like talking about you guys know mostly about that um, but you treat it like a metallic because you're trying to prevent pinholes because it's decorative right so at the end you want it to everything to look nice and glassed out and so we have the high build low viscosity primer that you're gonna install same thing 230 square feet a gallon it's low vis so it's gonna help creep into the concrete and close in on pinholes baby don't do that after that you're gonna come back in and it's like the urethane cement right you're gonna put that down at, at, with a half inch v-notch it's gonna be around 50 square feet per kit a uh, kit is a gallon and a half we sell three gallon kits so in that case it's a hundred square feet a gallon um, you know in some cases you'll have to put vapor barrier I always recommend a vapor barrier when you're going uh, slab slab on grade right so when you're when you're going over concrete guys you, you need to protect your investment okay and so you want to you don't want that thing to fail on you and anytime you're slab on grade guess what can happen hydrostatic pressure osmotic blistering all these kinds of things so installing the gorilla moisture vapor barrier is going to be a really good way to prevent against not only hydrostatic but also the osmotic I'm sorry yeah, the osmotic blistering which is gonna happen um, through osmosis and chemical uh, pH changes in the concrete that attacks the floor right and so whether you use you know, some you might get on the floor maybe self-leveled I'll tell you to use Gorilla Prime Time all right where you can dip and roll it's a slightly cheaper product maybe you do two coats but you're trying to seal the floor off before you get to the terrazzino once you install terrazzino depending on the place for top coats and i will tell you this for the high build epoxy systems as well you can finish it with the pot with wax you're gonna get that nice high gloss look you can put like five six coats of wax we have we have a special wax that we sell from gorilla that's a concentrate that you can you know, it's a 37% solids wax, and um, put six, seven coats of wax, burnish it. You're gonna have a nice glass finish, and let them let them wear it out, right? Hey, Daddy. Hey, baby. Any little scratches, you know, you're gonna be able to burn them out with the high speed burnisher in the in the regular day to day maintenance. So that's why you see like every lobby, any school, they use wax a lot. You go to a hospital. They're using wax. Uh, it's gonna protect the wear layer. You don't wanna have to really ever wear through the terrazino or vinyl tile or wood or whatever. And so that's why I recommend wax in a lot of cases because not only is wax, wax is very slip resistant, guys. The slip coefficient of wax is like really, really good. Um, a lot of times people are like, hey, this is too slippery. I'm like, oh, throw some wax on it. Um, 
and it's cheaper, quicker, faster, very minimal downtime, and you still get that nice glass look. We just gave, uh, my wife gave birth to my baby boy Ace. They got terrazzo all on the floors, terrazzo and vinyl. And when I'm telling you, you can see the wax on top, it's on thick. And they burnish and clean that thing every night, and it looks shiny. Um, and trust me, nobody cares about seeing the little ripples and whatever, you know, what any kind of texture, because it looks like glass. I mean, it doesn't look like glass, but when you're standing and walking, it reflects really, really well. Hi, Daddy. Hi, baby. So, wax is something that Daddy, people need to start Friday. using. And we're going to do another Daddy, video really talking about expectations with all scratch resistance and whatnot. So, we have all of our... All of our Gorilla products are scientifically tested for scratch resistance, UV cycles, compression, compressive uh, PSI, you name it. Everything that you need to know. Oh, so we're going to teach yeah. you, I'm going to teach you how to read these spec sheets and um, really how to compare and how to talk to your customers and set the right expectation about scratches and stuff like that. Because... Um, Especially in industrial systems, it, you know, it's a functional thing. It, it takes a beating. It's probably less scrutinizing in that case. But when you're doing a decorative system, it's important for your customers to really know what they can expect from a floor. If you tell them it's not going to scratch, then uh, you're going to be sorely mistaken. You get a brand new car, you get a scratch-resistant ShamWow, and you wipe it. And guess what? You're going to see little scratches on it. So that's what they make wax for on cars too, right, guys? You see the little... Um, and then also with that, you, you enable yourself to be able to go back and do the maintenance for Hi, them. Or if they have their own uh, maintenance team in-house, then guess what? That's what they're going to be doing to the floor. They're going to be waxing it. So I'm okay with putting polyurethane on it um, or just waxing it for them. But, you know, that's conversations that have to be had with management. Honey, <laughs> honey, hello. Honey. So that's... A few of the industrial systems I left out. We have epoxy mortar that's hand trowelable. We have urethane cement mortar that's troweled up by hand and self leveling, like the urethane cement. Um, we have power trowel mortars where you can run the concrete burnisher on top of it after you lay it with a scree box. I even have one that you can put down with a gauge rake. Okay. And um, what else? I got acid resistant, and then I also have um, freeze resistant. I have coal tar, right? When you want to do coal tar epoxy with aggregate, let's say you want to like fix a pothole at, a, at an airport or something like that. So we got these kinds of products. And you're only gonna know when you give us a call, call me directly. Okay, you can call Raphael, but call me. You know me, you talk to me on here. When you want to know something, we got some specific thing going on. What was that? Was that a check? No. Um, we're going to need you, you know, I'm going to help you, guide you in the right direction, put together a system that's going to withstand the traffic that the place is going to experience, okay? Um... When you're dealing with these kinds of situations in an industrial, commercial, guys, the price is nothing. You need to, you need to, you need to be able to teach these people, like you're gonna pay for something, and if you don't pay for that thing, you're gonna pay later on because you're gonna have to shut the place down to redo your floors. In a lot of cases, what happens is, um, like the health department's gonna shut you down this kind of stuff so it really costs them more on the back end so it's your job as an installer to basically explain to them why this kind of a floor and whatnot right all right so yeah Justin is doing a 42,000 square foot parking garage first of all the cost like I give them a really good price cost per square foot because we're gonna go and price those things out with our manufacturers they're gonna give us better pricing and so you're going to find that with the Gorilla products. If you got a little job, yeah, it's going to be more expensive than the cheap Canadian stuff that might be out there. And all these other guys, Asian resins and whatever. 
Um, but when you're doing big work, the prices come down. The products are high performance, guys. Like, look at look at the spec sheets from your company. See what's on there. If you don't see all these different tests, they're not serious. We have the tests on there because a lot of times different environments require certain tolerances, certain abrasion resistance and chemical resistance. And so our products... Those that are meant to be, I mean, all of them do chemical tests. Like we do chemical tests, submersion, it gives a rating A through E. And we will take hydrochloric acid, sky draw, 10% dilution hydrochloric, 20%, you know, uh, vinegar, whatever. And we put it on there and then we're going to test it for four hours, 12 hours, 24 hours, 72 hours, and then continuous and give it a rating. And that rating is based on it can hold it or it can't. And so our products are designed to withstand this kind of tolerances. They're designed for real world situations and applications. And they're not just, you know, a lot of these brands that are out there, they're just there to like take care of like little home residential metallics and a flake garage system and whatnot. But you'll find that all the Gorilla products have an extensive specification sheet and um, you want to do what's best for your customer. Residential, commercial, all of them. You want to put down products. Not that they're going to make you an extra $100, $200 when you're doing your floor. Big whoop. You want to put down stuff that's going to stand the less... <laughs> Baby looked at me. <laughs> it's going to stand the test of time, right? So, if I can help you in any way. My name's Alessio Trabelsi. Uh, 14, I'm going pretty much 15 years now, finally 15 years in uh, installing these kinds of systems, uh, distribution, New Jersey Decorative Concrete Supply, we've been doing it for 9 years, going on 10, I think we actually hit 10 in June, um, is it 10 years? No, 9 years in June, next June it'll be 10 years, New Jersey Decorative Concrete Supply is out. And so, I understand the products well. I understand the formulations, the chemistry behind it. To an extent, you know, I'm not a chemist, but, you know, when you're speaking to chemists all the time, and we brought them on here and interviewed them, and, and so you get to understand really what it's about. The great thing about Gorilla products, when you read the spec sheets, it tells you exactly what it's for, okay? And so... You might find three different clear 100% solid epoxies. One might be fast, one might be slow, one might be for arctic temperatures, one might be have a higher scratch resistance. You know, so they all have different viscosities and things like that. And so that's what we're gonna go over the next videos. I'm gonna teach you guys how to effectively read a spec sheet, what it means, and how cer certain things on the spec sheet can benefit you, okay? New Jersey Decorative Concrete Supply, you get a project coming up, big project, small project, please contact me. You can reach out on here. I'll give you my cell phone number. We can talk all day on the phone. Let me help you put together a good system for your customers. Even the metallics, guys. Gorilla, the best of the best, I'm telling you. You guys want to sleep on it. I see a lot of these new cheap resins that they just don't flow out that well and you know, you want to look like a rock star, we got products for you. Um, I'm highlighting the Gorilla, but we have a lot of other products. Lab Surface, um, Mape, Chemtex. We, we got them all. We're not a one-trick pony, guys. We can help you out in any way possible. And you can take advantage, you know, especially when you're out of state. You don't have to be in New Jersey. Out of state, we do drop shipping direct from the manufacturers. They get... A lot of times, you know, we're giving you good pricing on it because you're out of state. You don't have to pay. You pay shipping for that project. So it works out to your advantage. All right, guys. Have a great day. Remember, Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. He'll forgive you of all your sins. He'll give a meaning to your life. Uh, life can get hard sometimes, many times, if you're living in the same world that I'm living in. And uh, it's good to have the creator of the entire universe and you.
by your side, helping you navigate through it. It ain't going to be all, you know, uh, milk and honey. Daddy. But you'll be saved. You'll have eternal salvation. And you're going to have something to lean on. You know, a lot of people, they don't Daddy. have. They try to lean on themselves. Daddy, please try to put this Until you realize. On. Yeah, press that button. Until you realize. This, yeah. Sure, it doesn't do nothing, but. You'll realize that you're really not as uh, resourceful as you think you are. You know, I always used to think farmers, oh, they can cook their own food, grow their own food. If this food supply was done tomorrow, these guys will live forever. But guess what? Even they have to. Farmers know they got to rely on God because a flood can come down and crush all the crops. If it doesn't rain, the food ain't going to grow. So these things are out of your reach. And so... Uh, made a big impact in my life, completely changed who I became and who I currently am. I was born, I became born again. And um, I do this for God. Everything's for God. We work to make a living, but while we have these conversations, I'm going to always talk to you about God, all right? I'm looking out for you, my brother. I hope you can be my brother in the Lord. Have a great day, guys. God bless you.